Who is the bad guy in history who isn't actually a bad guy? Neville Chamberlain was widely hated in the UK after the Britain went to war with Germany because of his policy of appeasement towards the Nazi-run Germany when he was prime minister, even being one of the central people who allowed Germany to annex Czechoslovakia, which blew up in his face when the Germans invaded Poland and triggered the Second World War. He was forced to resign as prime minister less than a year into the war due to revolt from the Labour and Liberal parties and handed the reins over to Winston Churchill, who was himself forced out of office after the first war because of fears that Germany would rearm. However, due to British laws about disclosing classified documents 30 years after their being sealed, it emerged that Britain couldn't risk Germany's anger during the Czech debacle as they were thoroughly unprepared for war. Chamberlain delayed the inevitable which gave the Allies a significant helping hand when the war finally did happen. Despite what was portrayed in Amadeus, and though in reality they were musical rivals, Antonio Salieri was actually friends with Wolfgang Mozart. In fact, years after Mozart's death, Salieri assisted with and helped finance his son Franz Xaver's musical education as a tribute to his late friend. Darius III and Xerxes they're portrayed badly because of Alexander the Great and also the movie 300. Marie Antoinette. The woman was a spoiled rich girl sure, but the whole damn country condemned her despite the fact her husband wasn't always had been the one in charge of things. My dad apparently because every time we talk it's always, buddy idk why you think I'm the bad guy. That Roman that gave Jesus vinegar to drink. Turns out that the Roman military gave their soldiers a water vinegar mix to drink as it was good for refilling salt levels after sweating. That means all the Roman did was give Jesus a sip of his own drink. Not force him to drink vinegar as punishment insult. A more modern example is, the lady that famously sued McDonald's for their coffee being too hot, in 1994. That lawsuit gets treated as an example of how oversaturated America is with litigation over small things. As it turns out, however, her situation was extremely justified. She suffered third degree burns that required skin grafting and had permanent disfigurement. Her labia fused together. Needless to say, McDonald's were serving their coffee far too hot and the case very well may have prevented future similar incidents. Edit, to the people saying it's her fault for spilling her coffee. Here's a picture of her injuries, NSFW and NSFL. Does anybody really deserve those injuries for the simple mistake of spilling their coffee? Would you really expect third degree burns if you spilled coffee on yourself? Not so much a history per se, but Pontius Pilate was definitely a real dude who gets a bad rap by a couple billion Christians. Even the Gospels recognize that he really didn't want to kill Jesus, but the Sanhedrin, ruling class of high priests in Judea, more or less forced his hand. What's more, Pilate allegedly looked for every out to not put him to death. First he refused to hear the case, then kicked it to the ruler of Galilee, Herod Antipas, then gave Jesus every opportunity to wiggle out of the charges. It was only after the insistence of the Sanhedrin, refusal of Antipas to hear the case, and Jesus' stubborn commitment, or even desire, to be crucified that he passed the sentence. The whole deal with Pilate washing his hands after condemning Jesus was basically a gesture to I did everything I could to avoid this. It's on you. All in all a pretty solid Roman politician trying to rule a Roman backwater and deal with an unruly quasi-insurgent group as best he could. He was given a more or less impossible task, and was essentially used by the Sanhedrin. But all most Christians remember is that Jesus Christ suffered under Pontius Pilate. Full disclaimer I am not a Christian. And obviously the history here is poorly documented, if at all, and the specifics in the Bible are almost certainly inaccurate. But Pilate was a real guide who was the Roman governor of Judea at the time, and by all accounts did his job as well as could be expected. Not really a bad guy, but Reddit has a tendency to judge medieval early renascimental famous people as pedophile because they married their wife after the first blood. But at the time the average age for a girl to menstruate was more 16-17 so they weren't ducking 12 yo. Also it was common among kings to marry legally to forge an alliance, but to not really live as a couple since many years after. So even if King X really did marry a 13 years old, there is a very good chance that for a good 5 years they didn't even use the same room. 
Machiavelli would be shocked and saddened to know his name is synonymous with tyranny and pure evil. Guy was a staunch supporter of republics and a savvy politician. Billy the Kid wasn't a good guy by any means, but was a victim of negative propaganda by the press at the time. He was orphaned in his early teens and fell in with the wrong crowd. After a brief run in with the law, I think he was lookout for a small robbery, wasn't even part of the main crew. He didn't want to wait around 6 months or a year for a judge to make their way to the tiny little town. So he escaped jail and ran. What teenager would act differently? He ran to Arizona looking for work. In Arizona he found work, but was still one of the youngest there. A bully in a bar picked on him for weeks until Billy got fed up and shot him. On the run again he goes back to New Mexico. In New Mexico he resorts to stealing to be able to survive. He steals some horses from a prominent rancher. Instead of prosecuting him, the rancher hires him. Billy is thrilled and works hard. He is happy because he has a legit job again. The rancher had a corrupt as it rival who had the local law in his pocket. He was related to the sheriff. The rival rancher killed Billy's boss in the street. Billy and his fellow cowboys that loved their boss decided this was not okay. And the Lincoln County War started. Billy is the only one of the men on his side of the war to have been in every battle. Eventually, Billy felt he had accomplished his revenge mission. So he settled down with his best gal. Problem was, she was Mexican. And he was white. His girlfriend's brother didn't like Billy being with his sister. So he tipped off the law as to where Billy was hiding. The Lincoln County Sheriff showed up in the middle of the night and shot Billy in the back. There is a lot more to it. For example, when Billy was in Lincoln County Jail, he talked to the New Mexico Territory Governor. The Governor promised him a complete pardon if he'd be a witness in the trials of the people from the corrupt rancher. Billy agreed and testified. The Governor then went back on his promise and left Billy to rot. So Billy killed the jailers and fled again. That governor was too busy getting an ambassadorship and writing the book Ben-Hur to keep his promises. TL. DR. Billy the kid wasn't a good guy. He killed a good number of people. But for most of his life he just wanted to work a straight job and be left alone. He wasn't. And he got pushed past his breaking point. Edit. Well this blew up while I was at work. I'd like to thank my 4 year old for becoming temporarily obsessed with Billy the Kid and prompting me to do a ton of research on him to answer all the questions that only a 4 year old can come up with. The Roman Emperor Gaius Caesar. Better known as Caligula. Hell of a smear campaign his enemies did. Most likely brought upon himself because of his intolerance to the Senate's corruption and or lack of effectiveness. The crazy stories? Most likely made up of a willful misrepresentation of something Caligula said. The story about him making his horse consul because he was crazy? Misrepresentation of him mocking the senate by telling them his horse could do a better job. More so sports history, but the film Cinderella Man portrayed boxer Max Bear as a murderous psychopath who gladly killed two fighters in the ring. In reality, he was personally devastated by these deaths. In the one he was most directly responsible for. He ended up giving his winnings from his next few fights to the fighter's family. Anyone who won a war then rewrote history books. Except Japan. They lost and still rewrote the history books. For their own students. Also. Second nomination. Warren G. Harding. His administration was very corrupt. He was pretty immoral. And there were some policy mishaps. All of which have put him on many lists of worst presidents ever. But, his administration also reversed many of the authoritarian policies of President Wilson. He liberalized the economy. Wilson had imposed many controls during the war. Allowing recovery and a boom to emerge from a major recession. He issued pardons for political prisoners like Eugene V. Debs. Who had been jailed for protesting World War I. While Wilson. A notorious racist had moved towards segregating the civil service. Harding moved back towards integration and tried to hire more African Americans. He lobbied for a federal anti-lynching bill to let agencies like the FBI go after the Klan. He also arranged a formal peace treaty with Germany. Since the Senate wouldn't ratify Versailles but Wilson wouldn't propose anything but Versailles. His rather humble philosophy on the role and character of the presidency is also refreshing when compared to the messianism that infects the office today as it had under Wilson. Despite the scandals that rocked his presidency, he was incredibly popular at the time, and for good reason. Vlad the Impaler 
Elizabeth Bathory. Some scholars say that the truth of the claims made against her can't be verified or debunked at this point. But there's good reason to believe that her being painted as a mass murderer was part of a smear campaign and political plot to usurp her land and power since she was from an extremely powerful family tied to Polish royalty and the King of Hungary owed a large debt to the Bathory family, which was cancelled in exchange for not putting her on trial. Spain got blamed for the 1918 pandemic because they were the only country honestly reporting on it. Other countries did not want to look weak during World War 1 and wouldn't report on it. Turned out that a farm in Kansas and possibly the French trenches were the actual origin. Edit. Chinese laborers locked in boxcars in Canada seems to be the current leading theory. In the new report, Humphreys finds archival evidence that a respiratory illness that struck northern China in November 1917 was identified a year later by Chinese health officials as identical to the Spanish flu. He also found medical records indicating that more than 3,000 of the 25,000 Chinese Labour Corps workers who were transported across Canada en route to Europe starting in 1917 ended up in medical quarantine, many with flu-like symptoms. Richard III. He's just such a nice guy. It depends on the point of view. On Russians mind Michael Gorbachev is a bad guy because they make him responsible for the end of the Soviet Union. Prince John. The bad guy from Robin Hood was basically the steroid of a kingdom his beloved brother hadn't even set foot on. While Richard the Lionheart was faffing about in the Crusades, John was running the kingdom and turning it into something that could sustain itself. While he was doing that, his useless brother gets his ass kidnapped so John has to raise taxes, cue Robin Hood, to bring back the rightful king the people love so much. So basically, Prince John runs England for his brother and people love his brother for it. Then said brother gets kidnapped so John raises taxes to get him back and becomes the bad guy in the eyes of the lords, and by extension the people, who want their rightful king back. The man eventually does become the rightful king only to have all the lords hate him for the crime of investing money into the kingdom. As a result he signs the Magna Carta, limiting royal power. That said he wasn't a saint. The man did have a hand in the collapse of Norman France and wasted a lot of money and men trying to reclaim the region. I'm not trying to say he was a good guy per se, just not the bad guy for what people hate him for. Louis V. Most other kings of France before him were assholes drunk on power. The dude didn't want to be king. His dream job was being a locksmith. But he was in charge when the people frustration and anger were starting to boil over. So he did a national survey just to know what could be done to make people's life better. But it sent a signal that people mistook for weakness, instead of kindness, and decided it was a good time to start the French Revolution. Heinz du Fenchmerz. I swear if anyone mentions Hitler, I'd be angrily annoyed. Jack Kevorkian. He was a doctor who was way ahead of his time. By supporting people's right to choose to end their own suffering he is often portrayed as a murder crazy psycho, when in reality he only wanted to give people the right to die with dignity and grace. I'm hoping that as the shift for people's right to die becomes more accept history will rewrite the chapter on him. Benedict Arnold. Now. He was a traitor. That's undeniable. But he fought for the colonists earnestly at the beginning of the revolution, but kept having other people taking credit for the battles he was involved in and was finally accused of being sympathetic to the British, because of the social circles he was involved in. This was after he had been wounded twice in battle and I believe he also lost his civilian business. Basically, he got it on throughout the revolution by his own side and eventually got sick of it and switched sides. Still a traitor, or a double traitor? Since was technically a traitor to the British first, but it didn't happen for no reason. Does Hades count? Cause if so it's Hades he's actually a really good guy he's a loving husband and to be frank a very peaceful god the only time he tormented someone was when two guys tried to steal his wife. Persephone. Sorry if I spelled that wrong. This isn't exactly historical, but the lady who sued McDonald's because she spilled hot coffee on herself. She actually suffered third degree burns and really only wanted McDonald's to cover her medical expenses. When they refused she ended up having no choice but to sue. And she won. McDonald's then launched a misinformation campaign to make it seem like the lawsuit was totally frivolous and basically humiliate her. From my point of view, 
the Jedi are evil. Isn't necessarily a bad guy, but Ulysses S. Grant, his presidency is known for being pretty crummy, but the truth is that he had no experience in politics and was easily manipulated. Corruption was rampant under his presidency because people took advantage of how he saw the best in people. He was a great general that was essential in the civil war, but was also smeared throughout his life. Lost causes labeled him as a butcher and a drunk, when the truth is that he really just did the best job he could, although he did have a problem with alcohol, it was greatly exaggerated. Jesus. Grave mistake crucifying that guy. The Persians. Who are villainized by the Greeks but are actually one of the most culturally and technologically advanced cultures of the time. Gordon Ramsay. He's a nice guy I roll and he's very supportive with kids. Wholesome content. Edit. Hello everyone. I get it. Not a very good guy. Thank you for informing me. Truly didn't know that much about him before this but now I know. Colon. Vlad the Impaler. The man used over the top gore and extremely messed up ways to defend his much smaller country from those who tried take it over. He ended the tradition of having to turn over the firstborn sons to the invading forces in return for peace. Sure. He used some insanely brutal tactics but they sent a message that made both him and his army seem otherworldly. It'll take a decade or two, but Edward Snowden will make that list. Can't believe nobody said it yet but, Aaron Burr, sir. Gang has Khan. Yes he destroyed and killed many but his ruling and leadership skills were ahead of his time. Religious tolerance, universal law, left conquered cities alone. A mailing system banned torture and slavery as well as in government and military ranks were based on skill instead of nepotism, as well as would let former enemies into his army. He originally didn't set out to create the biggest kingdom ever at all started when his wife was kidnapped. Once he was able to save her she was pregnant and it was not sure who the paternity was but Genghis treated the son like his own. Karl Marx. I am not a communist, but I'll be crucified for this. His thinking was way ahead of its time, and has been twisted out of shape by pretty much all politicians on either side of the political divide. The man was deeply concerned about the welfare of the common man as well as the fate of nations. HP. Lovecraft. Reddit likes to oversimplify his life by saying he was a massive racist, conveniently ignoring the fact that he was a mentally ill person that not only feared people of other races, he feared everything that was not exactly like him. Suffered from a crippling agoraphobia as well. His family had mental illness history, with, at one point, both his father and his mother being hospitalized for mental illness. The guy had a ducked up mental health, and his genius comes for the fact that he managed to portray his paralyzing fear of everything that is different into his art. Love a horror and the dread feeling that it puts you through was his daily life. Being petrified of every culture and every person that was different. Being afraid to even leave his own house. And, even though the odds were severely stacked against him, he still managed to balance his views. And, by the end of his life was a lot more understanding of other cultures, even ended up marrying a Jew. Saying that HP, Lovecraft was a massive racist, while true, is also an insulting oversimplification of someone's severe problems with mental health. But, in the era of cancel culture, everything must either be black or white, and there is no space of analyzing what actually went on. Urban II, the Pope that called the First Crusade. He's largely lambasted today because we think the Crusades were some sort of genocidal frenzy of bloodthirsty fanaticism driven by intolerance, hatred, and greed. But that's way off. At the time, the Seljuk Turks had invaded the Middle East and the Eastern Roman Empire, nearly toppling the Eastern Roman Empire while not respecting the traditional rights of non-Muslim subjects or pilgrims, tearing up the loose understanding that had previously kept some semblance of peace between Christianity and Islam. Meanwhile, Europe had a problem with 2nd 3rd ETC sons going off as wandering mercenaries which were in fact bandits that terrorized the countryside. Urban got a request for help from the Eastern Romans and decided to turn the time's troubles into opportunity. The result was obviously a nasty war with everything that comes with that. However, the most recent Roman losses were reversed. 
helping the last bastion of classical civilization survive a few more centuries. Although later crusaders didn't help, the resulting kingdom in Jerusalem pledged itself to protect the rights of everyone, Christian or Muslim. And some Muslim chronicles even say it was more just to Muslims than Islamic rulers were. The principle of an armed pilgrimage remade the ideal of the Western warrior nobility into something more virtuous and knightly, as opposed to being little more than warlords who ruled with brutality and bribery. The idea of a holy war, while hateful to us today, helped enshrine the role of the church in regulating warfare, previously an utterly barbarous affair, with rules about when fighting could occur, who couldn't be attacked and generally trying to normalize peace. New contacts with the East Ray introduced many lost classical works to Europe, which previously had only had the few things monasteries managed to preserve. The expansionist spirit of classical Islam, having been revived by the Seljuk zeal, was checked for a time. So it would be centuries until another such power would try to conquer the West. There are absolutely things to criticize. But the principles and accomplishments of Urban's crusade were a major positive for re-civilizing the West. When I was learning about the civil rights movement in high school they depicted Malcolm X as a extremist and never got into his views now I'm turning 24 this year and I've learned he really wasn't the extremist they taught me he was. Hitler's brother Alois who fought in the US Army against Germany and his brother. Germany in World War 1. Don't understand how people still think they were bad or something. They had the same moral ground as Britain, France, Russia or the USA in the war. I hate the Wonder Woman movie. There's a load of people in the thread that don't understand the, but isn't actually a bad guy part of your question. Not many great responses here. It depends on which side of the propaganda you hear. Edward Snowden. This is more tended towards a religion, paganism. So many people have a gross misconception of the religion and label them as witches or devil worshippers and all this stupid stuff. They know nothing about pagan beliefs or holidays. And if they did, they'd eat their own words. Do your own research on it. Don't freaking go off boundless here say, I'm not a pagan. But I recently overheard an argument between a Christian and a pagan. And the Christian called the pagan a devil worshipper and couldn't understand or accept the fact that he didn't believe in her god. He's her co-worker, and she was like I can't talk to you anymore because you worship the devil. Absolutely stupid. Don't know if he is considered a bad guy to many, but Ho Chi Minh. He was only trying to unify the Vietnamese and get rid of foreign powers, and used communism as a way to do so. The Persian Empire. They actually were nicer to their people than the Greeks. Christopher Columbus. Most of the things he's blamed for were either unintentional unpreventable or done by his successors. Also, his navigations were accurate to the information he had at the time. He wasn't a good guy per se, just not as bad as he's commonly painted to be. Cue the Hitler did nothing wrong crowd. Ned Stark. Obviously we don't know the full truth because we were not there but it always seemed fishy to me that the regime portrayed him as a traitor when he was widely respected for his honor and kindness throughout his entire adult life. Satan encourages man to eat from the tree of knowledge so they could gain wisdom. God wanted man to remain dumb. I always thought Judas got a bad deal. God's plan for him was to be instrumental in Jesus' death. If Judas was capable of going against God's plan then surely going against God's plan is bad behavior. But if he's not capable, then how can he be held responsible? Napoleon. He gets a really bad rap. Cinderella man's Max Bear. His antagonistic role was just for the film. He felt awful for killing his opponents. He also apparently funded the building of a bridge. The name of it escapes me though. If I see one Hitler in and here I'm going to be very disappointed. Erwin Rommel. Extremely well renowned Nazi officer. Respected by pretty much everyone. Didn't condone any of Hitler's plots. In fact he only wanted what was best for Germany. Plotted to kill Hitler later on in the war. Committed sis to prevent Hitler killing his family. A biographical movie or series would be awesome but no one is going to fund a show about a Nazi hero. Edit. Before anyone gets offended. My information is from something I saw or read years ago. I didn't know there was controversy about him. 
He was painted as a bad guy and traitor to the country by Donald Rumsfeld and Rupert Murdoch as a political movement. John McCain chose to stay in a Vietnamese prison camp with his soldiers when he could have gotten out during an officer exchange. After getting home he was so damaged that he needed therapy and rehabilitation to be able to raise his head and arms. He then chose to dedicate his life to public service and became a career politician. When he died the President of the United States refused to lower the flags to half-mast until forced by his cabinet. And he refused to attend the funeral of a senator. While it is common to go to battle as during a political election campaign, Trump couldn't let it go. Like a child. After it was over. Winston Churchill was apparently the other way round. And at times after the war was a real jerk. Pontius Pilate. He is often portrayed as the Roman governor who ordered the execution of Jesus Christ. However, there are an overwhelming amount of apocryphal texts which argue that Pilate tried to defend Jesus and did not want him to die for lack of committing any crime which would warrant capital punishment. The texts, including many passages of the Bible itself, explain that he was forced to let the Roman public have their wish of crucifixion for fear of retaliation from the church and Jewish high priests. This led to the iconic account of Pilate washing his hands of Christ's blood, insinuating he wanted nothing to do with the death of Christ. However, the fact still remains that these events happened 2000 years ago, with the biblical passages being translated throughout the years hundreds of times. Nobody knows the true story. There weren't iPhones or YouTube back then to document everything. Edward Snowden he got exiled just for letting everyone know we were being surveilled. I want to say Alan Turing, who despite all his work, was essentially mutilated and made a black mark on UK history for being gay. Pope Alexander V. I know him as Rodrigo Borgia had pretty relaxed policies towards Jewish people at a time when they had it really rough. One fringe theory is that he himself was a secret Jew. Sure, he was corrupt and had illegitimate children, but that wasn't really unusual for popes at the time. I remember everyone itched about Bush Jr., but it turns out it can get a lot worse. Donald J. Trump. Big media has made him out to be literally Hitler when some of his policy has done wonders for middle lower class Americans. OFC I'm gonna get downvoted by left wing reddit but I'm care. Lenin and his Bolsheviks. 